Hello engineers and welcome to the channel. I'm Mad Mavin and today we're taking a look at some of the new encounters coming with the Apex survival update to space engineers, courtesy of our friends over at Keen Software House. I'll start by briefly going over each encounter so you can get a feel for what's being added in the update, then I'll share some of my thoughts on what I've experienced, and finally we'll do a more in-depth breakdown of each encounter individually at the end. The first scenario we're diving into is the pirate encounter, which begins as you make your approach to a signal being broadcast from a distant asteroid. As you get closer, you suddenly receive a message. The pirates know you are coming, and they are enacting plans to stop you. You are suddenly met with countermeasures as two attack vessels are sent to intercept you, and the artillery on the base begins to take aim. Distracted by all that is going on, you miss the message that says, launch, and it's too late. That was my experience anyway, but let's pretend you made it past the defenses. You managed to open the door and successfully disable the turret waiting for you on the other side. And let's just take a second to admire this scenario here. I don't know, it's just, it's really cool that this is part of Vanilla Space Engineers. Inside, you discover an outpost with valuable components and supplies. You check everywhere loot might be and discover data pads left by previous inhabitants. Justification. Ooh, interesting. With the threat neutralized, the question becomes, do you strip this place of its valuables or keep this spot for your own? In the second scenario, you find your way to a seemingly unsuspecting asteroid. As you get closer, you realize there is someone else here, but they aren't too happy to have guests. Ooh, Craze Miner, what? Who are you? Did you follow me? Oh, oh, <laughs> that is so cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> that is not what I expected. Hey man, I just want to be friends. If you manage to defeat him and investigate the asteroid he was so keen on protecting, you'll find that it's rich in several valuable ores, and you'll also find the base that he was setting up. You begin to realize why he might have been so protective. The final encounter I found was a ship that was split in two, still rotating from the aftermath of what caused the separation. Let's mag down to this. Ooh. The, I love this, like, the slow rotating. Hey, whoa, whoa. That's a good amount of stuff right there. Sorry, buddy. As you explore, you find bodies of engineers that used to man the ship and more data pads that fill in the blanks on what might have happened here. There is more to this encounter, but I don't want to spoil anything for those looking forward to finding out themselves. It was fun not knowing for me, and I don't want to take that away from you, so I'll discuss this part later on when I give my thoughts, and I'll give you a spoiler warning beforehand so you can skip it. So those were the three encounters, and now I'll give you my thoughts on the update overall after having experienced this. But to give context to my feedback, I gotta give a little bit of backstory. For those who are unfamiliar with my channel, I am a space engineer's masochist. One of my favorite things to do is to find wacky ways to increase the level of difficulty in my survival playthroughs, usually by nerfing my suit, increasing planetary gravity, messing with the weather, and adding some kind of food mod. So naturally, when I found out that the next space engineer's update was primarily focused on Adding more survival elements like nerfing suits, dangerous weather systems, growing crops, and more, I was pretty excited. But there was only one problem. They gave me the encounter preview. In the list that I mentioned previously of how I like to ramp things up, I did not include combat. You see, for me, combat in Space Engineers was never really something I was super into. My preferred playstyle is that zero to hero, start from nothing and work your way up kind of story. And for a long time, combat felt like it was on the peripheral for that. Then along came the contact update and all of a sudden we had a real reason to fight. A creepy space faction that has access to incredible proto-technology that we can't replicate on our own? That's awesome. The only problem is, is that in the 2000 plus hours that I have in Space Engineers, I've never really learned how to fight. And let me tell you, the Factorum are not pushovers. They are meant to be endgame. So why am I telling you this? Well, it's for two reasons. 
One is because I needed to qualify my lack of combat experience before showing you my genuine first attempt at recording this. I need the grinder out here. Oh, 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 ow. Come on, come on, come on. Ah, uh, well. I see it. Ah, ha, ha. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was looking right at it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Ah. <laughs> All right. But two is because the part of the update that I thought would have the least impact on me personally might actually be my favorite part of this update and is going to change how I play Space Engineers from here on out. I really think Keen did a great job with this one, seeing a need and bridging a gap that would allow players like me to cross over and engage with content that I haven't bothered messing with up until now. And I'll tell you why. So first, let's look back at the encounter with that crazy miner. This is my favorite encounter and I love it for many reasons. And honestly, the first one is because I got got. I was so confused by this guy yelling at me and the drills that I didn't realize he had modified his otherwise unassuming ship and I got blasted and that genuinely made me laugh, which is obviously a plus. But mechanically, I think that this encounter is great because it adds an element of risk and reward to an otherwise monotonous task of checking asteroids for ore. Imagine doing your normal thing with your ore detector, and then all of a sudden this crazy miner starts defending a random asteroid and you have no idea why. If I was playing the game like normal, I would have died in that encounter and respawned thinking, what is that guy protecting? There's gotta be something cool in there. Now all of a sudden there's a story built around the objective that I was already working towards. I wanted to get ore, this wild thing happened, and now there is an obstacle to overcome in order to get what I want. And at the end, you get rewarded for overcoming that obstacle. Both in getting the thing that you were looking for, plus a bit extra, and in learning more about the characters that inhabit this sector of space, which to me is also a major bonus. But I think the best part of this encounter is that it happens to you rather than you seeking it out. No more peripheral, this is part of your story about trying to accomplish your goal. And that alone changes everything. Next, let's talk about the pirate encounter a bit more. While this one did give me quite a bit of trouble, I really liked how it felt like a mini dungeon. And even though I got my butt handed to me, it did still feel like more of a mid-game level threat rather than an end-game threat. And I think that that point is really important. But now I can clearly see that the minor encounter is an early game encounter, this pirate outpost is more of a mid-game, and then fighting the Factorum is end-game. Now I know where the entry level is. And with this pirate encounter, I know where I'm trying to build to. These are steps in the progression that gets you to the end game, and they help you learn and build confidence as you go. I also appreciate the fact that the loot from this encounter also feels mid-game. It doesn't feel like if you take over this base, you'll never need resources again. It feels well balanced for the risk that you took to get there. Last thing about this encounter is that I really, really enjoyed the data pads. I'm a nerd and I like using my imagination, so having lore about the people who lived here adds a lot in my book. But one of the data pads in particular took center stage for me, and it was the to-do list of things that needed to be fixed, because everything on that list was actually broken on the base. And if you wanted to use this base, you'd be picking up where these people left off, continuing a story that was left unfinished, which to me is really cool. That leads me to the last encounter, the split in half ship. I love this encounter because it felt so intentionally designed and deceptively simple on the surface. The two pieces subtly spinning, the debris everywhere, the bodies of the engineers and the lighting effects, all of that did a great job of telling a story even before you find any data pads that corroborate what you already know to be true. But there's more, and if you don't want spoilers, this is the warning to skip to the next bit. So all of the little eye-catching details of this wreck were meant to pique curiosity while leading you to a button that says, Reboot Systems. 
Oh. Uh-oh. Oh! Of course it would do that. Of course it would do that. Why would it not do that? And here's that scene again from the outside. And here it is again if you click that button in the other half of the ship. I think one of the funniest parts of this encounter is the fact that after you get that message that basically says, why did you think that was gonna work, you idiot? You go careening off into space and the explosions don't kill you. And you are stuck inside of this spinning piece of space debris until you can grind your way out. And then you are just floating there in the aftermath. And again, I found myself laughing at falling victim to my own monkey brain. So well played Keen for that. Each of these encounters told a story. They pulled me in and piqued my curiosity. They provided a challenge to overcome and a reason to care about combat. And I only got to mess around with three. In the coming update, we are getting 30 of these types of encounters to add flavor to our stories among the stars. So make sure you come to the live stream on September 8th, and I'll leave a link in the description for that. Thank you so much to Keen for thinking of me and for making one of my favorite games even better. And I cannot wait to see what other surprises are waiting for me out there in space.